welcome to the Pause It Podcast. I'm Dr. Sam, and with me as always is Dr. Robert. Dr. Robert, how are you doing? Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? <laughs> and as you guys can see, we have a guest today. So I am really, really excited to introduce Erica Messer. She is the founder of Wolfie's Wish, and probably I will not do as good of a job as you at explaining exactly what that is, how it all started, where you came from. And I'm just so thankful that you've come to join us today. So so welcome and thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> and so, you should probably tell everybody where you're joining us from today because you're oh, going yeah. farther away from uh, the States. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I live in Munich, Germany, and today I happen to be recording from the beautiful city of Vienna, Austria. My favorite. <laughs> Well, we feel very fortunate to have you. And um, I would love if you'd kind of maybe just kind of break down um, what Wolfie's Wish is and how it came about and kind of the whole genesis of of how you came to be. Sure. Um, well, how much time do I have? That could be a long story. Um, so the, the shortened version um, is basically that when Wolfgang, my my beloved COVID companion, adorable crazy cat, um, died suddenly and tragically, I was devastated and didn't know how to cope. Uh, I wasn't prepared in any way. And I knew I needed to cope and I knew I wanted to work through it, but I really only could find some books on Amazon. And that really made me panic because I thought, well, how many do I have to read? And do I have to read the whole thing? And how do I know that this is the right book? Because there was dozens of titles, right? And um, being in Germany, also some of them were going to take a little while to get to me. So I was really stressed out by it. And ultimately, um, just called my mom and said, I don't know what to do. And, um, you know, I guess I'm just going to sit and kind of meditate and just look at, you know, self-reflect. Like, okay what do I do? You know, and just kind of ask the universe for some guidance. And, um, it ended up being a really good thing, actually. Um, I was able to come up with some tools, like writing a love letter to Wolfgang and write down, writing down his story, mm -hmm. um, of how we found each other. And, and gradually I realized that like some of these things I was doing was actually making me feel lifted and, um, healing i could feel like there was some movement going on and so i'd share these things with her and um she said you know i really think you should make if i left something out she said i really think you should make this card deck that you couldn't find and that was one of the things i had searched for on amazon was um is there like a pet loss affirmation deck or something to just kind of get me headed in the right direction um i just felt so desperate mm. and you know, she she mentioned that because it was like day after day I, I was sharing with her some things that were helpful. And my first response was, no, mom, I'm grieving. I don't know how to do that. And I don't want to do that. That's that's a big undertaking, right? And knowing that it has to be published and printed and just, well, you know, it was overwhelming. Um, but I ended up seeking professional help after I think a couple of weeks. Mm. to just check in because I was really worried about my mental state and right. my well-being. And, um, you know, I have some, I do have existing mental health issues. So anything that's going to jeopardize that is really scary for me. Anyway, um, this this counselor that I reached out to, you know, I, I got to where I trusted her and I kind of said, you know, these are my symptoms. Have I lost my mind? And she said, unfortunately, everyone goes through this it's common uh -huh. that you for that you're forgetful that you you know walk right past your own apartment door and you know you leave things at the checkout line i mean that was i was having some pretty serious like ptsd like symptoms too and flashbacks and all this stuff and so i think it was almost immediately we're not really sunk in that i was normal Mm -hmm. And that that what I was experiencing was a normal response, was it just a it's like an you know, earth cracked for me. And I said, "Mom, I had no idea, and that 
that people feel this way. We don't, nobody has ever said anything to me like this or described mm-hmm. their symptoms to this extent. So that means that it's happening and we're all ashamed or confused or embarrassed or, um, you know, and that's when I said, well, what, what can we do? How do we make these cards? Like, what else can we do? And it was pretty much um, this idea to make, you know, a website with resources, yeah. um, like counselors, mm-hmm. basically, to to help people just have like a one place to go, even if it's not, has, doesn't have every answer, but just to start something. And then um, it really took off and things became quite easy. We had a lot of support from friends and family, mm-hmm. which told me, you're on to something, kid. You know, like, right. just keep yeah. going. You know, when, when things become easy, you know that there's something there. To Something's kind of keep guiding digging. you. I'm using my hands you. here. Like, no, where, it's fine. <laughs> Wait, I, my, I use my hands all the time. <laughs> but um, it, is, it is interesting, like, because you mentioned two really important things. I think one people are so fearful of admitting that that there's they have anxiety they have mental health concerns right because somehow it makes us less strong or less able to whatever it is you know what i mean and it's so common i mean i've i've experienced it and you know what i mean lots of like people who are high functioning doing a lot of things with their lives you think oh there's no way they feel that way and it's like oh no right. a lot of us do right and then you have that aspect of it but then the other two is you feel somewhat judged for maybe how hard you take the loss of a pet or something like that you know if somebody doesn't understand that bond and that's a very real and serious bond and it's like you, the last thing you want to do is feel like you have to explain how you feel when you're not even sure that you're processing it properly um, so I think right. your website gives people permission maybe to like say, oh, I'm not alone and I can start this process in, in a healthy way. Yeah, I think that I think you nailed it that, you know, I was even considering I was asking myself questions like, why is this hurting so bad? My brain doesn't understand. I can't rationalize it. It's just this just this pulling down, you know, and I've I've lost friends and family members so why is this so different and the more research I did in trying to answer this question for myself the more I found out that um about the human animal bond and how different that is and look at the comparison that I was making where um I talk to my mom every day for maybe 20 minutes but I'm with Wolfgang 24 7 Mm -hmm. and he depends on me I kind of depend on him Mm -hmm. So it really sheds a light on on something that wasn't so obvious to me that that dynamic is very different than human relationship. Mm-hmm. I would agree. I think first of all, thank you for sharing your story. I think that's a really yeah. That's the sure. first step in like letting other people know, like, hey, it's okay to feel this way. I think that's a big part of it. I think it's you open that door for other people to feel the same way now and actually share their feelings. So thank you for that. And your mom also sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she sounds like a lovely woman. So uh, sounds like an excellent support team. And I, I think that's a big part of it, like having that support team to feel like, hey, I can talk to someone about this, whether it's family uh, through Wolfie's wish. I think that's a great thing. And I think you guys really hit the nail on the head where animals are just different. Because uh, I feel the same way. I've had so many owners come in when they're about to euthanize a pet be like, I'm having a hard time with this than I am with my you know, grandma that just passed away a couple of weeks ago. And it's just yeah. I think you are with them at all times. They're 24 seven. They're like your shadow. They love you. They depend on you for things, but then we also depend on them for that. Like COVID that was horrible. Yeah. And right. like they were literally our best friends for three years because we couldn't leave the house. Or, and it, so it's just, I think right. that impact is uh, undersold, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. A lot of times too, pets are a link to other parts in our lives that maybe even people don't understand or even sometimes uh the loss of like a a child or the loss of a loved one in another way their pet is that last link to that person too and Mm -hmm. so there's this like extra layer that you feel this loss yourself and then there's this enormous amount of guilt that people have because a lot of times i know in your in your case um what you didn't choose to euthanize. There was a, a tread, like an accident, right. That occurred. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but the, the guilt that some people have when they have to make the choice to end their, their pet's life 
to either end that link, whatever, however complicated it is or simple, it's, it's never simple, you know? Right. And I, I have understood a new term to me, which is anticipatory grief, right? I didn't know that these things existed. I've learned so much mm-hmm. about pets and the human animal bond and that, and also that it really doesn't matter what type of animal we had, because I thought, are people that have dogs going to relate to me? Because I can already talk about my experience. But in fact, people that have horses and oh, yeah. rabbits, people bond with their birds. Birds are very intelligent and I've never owned one, but I, I did my research and I found, wow, this really transcends more than just cats and dogs. And, you know, are those people being supported? Yeah, Probably not because, you know, I don't know anybody personally closely that has owned um, a bird uh, for an extended period of time and had to say goodbye. So I don't know what that's like, but you know, I got on uh, forums and Facebook groups and was like, how are you guys doing? And what's this one about? And does anyone feel this way? You know, and I made friends with strangers from all over the world, which was great because it supported me too, right? All this time, I'm still grieving and figuring things out for myself. Mm -hmm. So they were helping me and I think I was helping them at the very least relate to each other and know that we're not alone, which is a really big part of this. Like you, like you mentioned with my mom, having someone I could confide in and say, you know, I'm feeling this way, or this is happening, or I'm having this thought, you know, am I okay? We need that. We need that support from people and friends. And if, if there are people that don't have that support, that's why I created the Wolfie's Wish Pet Loss Support Groups. You can come and ask us and talk to us and you can post anonymously if you want. But, um, and there's so many great Facebook groups too. I think there's the Rainbow Bridge Pet Loss Support Group, which is one of the biggest. Um, so that that's what I tried to do with wolfieswish.com was put as much information that I found helpful uh, um, so people could find what they wanted, right? And what would work for them. So there are books on there, for example. There are counselors, there's YouTube videos, there's meditations, there's music playlists. And if anyone listening has some suggestions, just bring it on. Send me an email. Uh, I would love to make this a really great website and try to be all inclusive. Yeah, I think that I think I think that that's awesome that you're open to that and that you've already kind of laid this amazing foundation because I think everything you've just mentioned are what people need, right? They need resources when they're not ready to tell other people how they feel, right? That they need to right. use personally. They need resources to be able to reach out when they do need somebody else's input, like, you know, you said you did. And then they need resources to have a community, to feel heard, to feel part of something. Um, And you're right. Not everybody does have a family member or a friend or somebody that will understand them. And and that has to be a very isolating feeling, which you've experienced. Sure. Sure. Yeah, actually, because this happened in October 2021. So, you know, we were there was like there was the I call it like the opening and closing period where like it'd be relaxation and then constraints again and then so I had actually moved to Germany in March of 2020 and so I really didn't have a support system there for all you know obvious reasons right and then um so that's why I think I hung I clung on so hard to my mom um and and if people don't have a support network, like like you said, it's really difficult to ask and field some questions, right? And to know when do I need to get professional help? How do I know? How do I answer a lot of these things? And they're very difficult questions, and I think they're different for everyone. But if you're wondering if you need it, just do it, right? Because mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. You, it could be more harmful to question it always and not act on that than it is to. Um, to just check in with someone for one, two, three sessions and then, you know, find some tools. Basically, I just want people to get the help that they need. I think it's really important to address the pet loss grief and and treat the symptoms of it. Yeah. I think it's nice to, to make it, that's something that's available to everybody. I remember in vet school, we had a pet loss hotline that people could call. Yeah. We had a, a, a social worker that ran it and students could come and help which I think probably we, gave them some empathy towards what the part of the hand that we were going to play in, in the life of these 
people, you know, because eventually we were going to be the ones responsible, at least for those planned ones, you know what I mean? And and that's even in and of itself, such an odd phenomenon, right? Like we're planning or scheduling a time to end the life of your pet. That that takes a lot to wrap your head around. I mean, and I know that happens yeah. maybe more for me than it does for you, Robert, because I guess in emergency medicine, people don't like plan to come to euthanize their pets, but I'm in general practice. So I am helping people make that decision. I mean, daily, every single day. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. And uh, so we, I get a couple of comments usually, but I usually get the ones where like, Hey, I want to see my vet tomorrow, but I couldn't wait any longer. Like it's just like they were suffering at home. And I think that right. anticipatory grief that you mentioned is such a, a really great statement. Cause I think that sums up really well. It's just that I know this has to happen but I don't want it to. And I don't like, and I'm choosing to end the life of my best friend. And that's really hard. That's a really tough thing to kind of wrap your head around of. So, um, yeah, I, I commend you honestly for when I'm looking through your, you know, I've looked at your website a little bit. Um, how would you, if someone had just lost their pet, where do you think you, you have a lot of great resources on here? Mm -hmm. Where would you have them start? Like can say, Hey, I'm new to this. I just lost my pet. I need, I need some help. Where would you have them start with Wolfie's wish? Honestly, I think having them join our pet loss support group because um, several of the admins are pet loss counselors. And so I think it's a great place to post questions and kind of guide them to the help that they need and finding the support that they want and what that looks like. Is it, do you want to read a book? Maybe there are people that want just that and they want to keep it, they want to deal with it, you know, internally and privately. Um Another idea would be to go to our YouTube channel where I interviewed uh, pet professionals, um, pet loss counselors on their experience and and what counseling looks like for pet loss. Mm -hmm. So they can kind of like be a little more passive about what's available. Um, there's also a blog on our website that, that has a lot of important topics like ways to practice self-care and how to ask for support from your friends, family, colleagues, neighbors. Um, so I think just starting at the website and kind of digging, poking around the resources page. And then of course I had to talk about, you know, the affirmation cards that I made. And I actually decided just recently to put some up for free for download. So you can, you can print for at home and cut them out and kind of see if that feels like a right fit. Um, and that feels really good to to just offer that because it's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to sit and read a card and reflect on that. And that's okay. That's what I wanted. And um, I found a lot of people that do like that. I think that's sometimes great. being able, so with the pet affirmation cards, can you give an example, like what that, what, like maybe what's one of the ones that somebody can yeah. download and, and what does that, what does that seem like? Yeah. Well, I think my favorite one is it's two-sided and the front side says i loved my pet with all my heart and the other side says the amount of pain i feel is equal to the love i gave and i think that just really sums up what these cards are for they they are to make you feel good but and they will they will make you cry yeah. um but it is so it's to like remember the joy and and give yourself permission to feel that pain but ultimately, you know, remembering their relationship and what it meant to you mm -hmm. is is what they're about. And I I read them. I like to read them once a day, kind of in the morning, and carry it around. Um, but there's been times where I've just taken the deck and kind of shuffled through it, and um, they're really really simple. Just simple tools. I, I don't remember what, what ones are specifically on the free download. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, no, that's okay. It's so new that I don't have that memorized. Right. Um, but they are, I did pick four that were more generic and universal. Maybe one of them might be a love letter and, and to, to write out, it's encouraging people to write out the story of their pet, how they found each other. Um, what did they love about their pet? What were some of the quirky things? What are some fun memories? Um, and you can actually download a love letter template that I made uh, with a little paw print border. And you can you know, print out 12 copies if you want. And then put it away somewhere in, a, in an envelope. Um, 
so that you have those memories. And I think doing that action allows you to relax a little bit and know that you can you can go back. You won't forget your pet. Right. And I think sometimes people hold on to the grief to hold on to the pet too. There's it's like tangled up together. They don't want to move through their grief or or you know heal from it because then then they're detaching from their pet. But actually, it's not true. I think yeah. Um, and that's something that I I think is best worked through with a professional. I'm mm-hmm. I am not a pet loss counselor. I want everyone to know that. <laughs> um, I I don't anticipate doing that either. Uh, I just like bringing people together with the resources and the professionals that are there that are experts and and can guide people. And so we will be offering a lot virtual counseling session um, the end of October with some of the admins that are in our group. And um, we're going to do it hopefully each one. I mean, ideally would have a week, a month, sorry, every month. And so we kind of have a rotation and uh, then people can come in and, and get a little bit of one-on-one in a group session. Yeah, I think that that's amazing. I think people, I, I'm not sure that people can anticipate how valuable that is. Um, mm-hmm. But I think as you start to to have to kind of work through that sadness, having a resource like that is really, I think, wonderful. And I, I think that's great that you've added that. That's awesome. Yeah, I think Thank that's you. Yeah. absolutely wonderful. It's very, very cool. Do you, um, I, I, do you ever have people come into the forums or anything like that ahead of time and say like, I think I'm, yeah. I'm coming to this place. And do you have any, any, um, stuff to kind of help people look at maybe how do you know when it's time or, or am I, you, you know what I'm saying? Cause I do find people seem to really struggle with that decision. Yeah, I do have people reach out to me on Instagram and say, you know, I have a senior animal and I don't know when the time is going to be, but I know it's going to be this year or in the next few months and I'm mm-hmm. already panicking and I'm already having a hard time. And I think that those those people really are the ones that need support right when they're right when they're able to admit it and see it themselves because they could have to make that decision the next day. You don't know how fast, you know, the the health will decline. Um, or you know, some people get cancer diagnoses for their for their dogs and cats and animals that that, you know, maybe within a week or two they have to make these decisions. So yeah. I think that um that, that is a really important topic to address and really hard. And I, I don't have experience with it, but I do that's why I lean on the counselors to say, how can we guide this person if they come up in the group with questions? Um, mm-hmm. There's also a, a, an author I met, Lisa Rimmer, and she wrote about her experience with her senior dog, Dakota, who was declining and they were just kind of helping her along. And then that day came almost out of the sun, just this is the day. And okay. she, I think it's great that she wrote her story down to help other people see that you don't know how the end is going to be and you can't predict that and that's okay the point is to give you and your pet some quality time together and maybe eliminate some of your unnecessary things in your life so that you can spend the that time with your dog or cat or animal and you know what what kind of goodbye do you want to give them you know are they going to have peanut butter cups that day yeah. are you gonna have peanut butter cups together <laughs> you know can you, you share them yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like ha- create some beautiful memories and use that time to plan how you want things to go as much as you can control right mm-hmm. and what are some, she took her dog to play in the snow like uh i think within the, the final month yeah um she wanted dakota to see snow and so there's beautiful stories like that that I think inspire people and make them go, oh, I never thought of that. What a great idea. You know, let's have let's have Christmas in September so that, you know, Bella can open up a stocking one more time. Or and yep. when I say open, you know what I mean, like destroy. Yeah. <laughs> Shred. Shred it. Shred so, it. <laughs> yeah. There are really no wrong ways to celebrate your pet. And it's it's personal and unique. But I like Lisa's story because she 
she shared what was good for her and her husband, you know, and going to the dog park the last time. And so, so I think stories like that are important. And in a forum or in a group setting, ideas are exchanged and uh, maybe some, some ideas come that have a addressing the anxiety. Um, it's just going to be there. It's more, I think it's really about self-care during that time because you mm-hmm. can't make the anxiety and the depression and the fear and the sadness go away. But we can look for ways to cope with it. And right. like I said, I think eliminating a lot of unnecessary social engagements during that time and um, extracurricular things at that time is really important to just allow yourself that space to adjust to the big, big change and void that is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I love the idea of, of when people can get some ideas about like bucket lists, sort of kind of a thing, like those those last enjoyments. And, and then Also to your idea of sharing the things that worked for your grief with other people. Like my um, cousin lost her dog very suddenly from heart failure that they didn't like, he just collapsed one day, you know, and it turned out he had Um, like very advanced heart disease and she had babies, like very young children at that time who really didn't, couldn't and didn't understand where this fixture in their life had gone. And I always loved the way that they said goodbye to, you know, her beloved dog. Um, She gave them a tangible way to say goodbye. They wrote him letters and sent balloons up to heaven to be with him. And, you know, and it was just this like, and I've, I've shared that with, with people after that because they needed some way. And that's just one story. So imagine having a community that Right. It's filled with people with way better ideas than I could ever come up with. You know what I mean? So right. it's, it's a gift. I love that. I love that. And, you know, in my family, we have a, we have a history of when we say goodbye to relatives, we do a lantern release mm-hmm. um, at right. my aunt's cottage. And we did that for her dog um, who had a, a brain tumor. And that was really hard. Um, but some of the things that she and her husband did where, you know, um, and he got thinking every day, like every day, you know, <laughs> and they, they just said, we're going to focus right now on the next couple of months of just spoiling her as much as possible. And then, and what a great memory to have for her and her husband, right. To think she had the best life we could give her. Um, so, so yeah, I think, I think I need to write a blog now about some new ideas because you just gave me one and I haven't even talked about the lantern release and we all sign the lantern. It's a paper lantern, and we do it over a lake, so there's no, you know, fire hazards or anything like that. <laughs> um, and uh, I love uh, bull release ceremonies. I am going to participate in one of those next month. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot of special ways we can make the best of what's coming. Yeah, I really do too. I th- I think, I mean, anything that you can do also to make it tangible and to really feel that loss and that grief is like. Like that's, that's amazing that you're, it's a hard conversation to have. Right. So it's like, it amazing that you do it with it such is. grace, which is really nice. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for giving space to, to talk about this and, and sharing your experiences too. Um, you know, and you brought up children and children is, it's so important. I think for them to understand, um, that their pet has died and not gone to live with Santa. But there are some parents that don't know, they don't know, and they're not prepared on how to talk about it. And I hope to bring light to that too and give parents some um, resources because uh, I actually know people and every year their kids say, can, for Christmas, can Santa bring our dog back? And um, how agonizing, right? For the yeah. parents yeah. to to yeah. have to go, oh man, we did the wrong thing. What do we do now? Um, but I think writing a letter better and and having a, a burial ceremony if possible is beautiful i've seen so many of beautiful pictures of people buying flower beds literally making a flower bed on these um like pet cocoons that are biodegradable and just like oh i wish i had thought of that so the more we can share these ideas the more um it, it brings healing to the to the humans and humans um, <laughs> and makes us helps us have better memories ultimately, 
right? And mm-hmm. better, um, better goodbyes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, hundred percent agree. And uh, I think that we also we obviously love what you're doing, uh, but everybody else does too. I just found out recently that uh, I was just at Super Zoo this last week, which is like a big oh yeah pet product conference. Oh um, yeah. And I found out that you actually won last year. Yeah, you had the product of the year yeah. for Super Zoo, which is a very big deal because if anyone's ever been there, there's literally thousands of companies there. And to be awarded that, that's that's pretty special. I think that just shows the impact of what you're doing. You're you're meeting that intersection between mental health, which is a big thing, and that growing animal uh bond that we're seeing with especially with millennials. Like mm-hmm. they're tossing away their kids mm-hmm. for pets. That's right. a thing. So right. I mean not I don't have phrasing, to, but yeah. Exactly. No, I, I'm a senior millennial, by the way. And uh, yeah, I don't have children and I now have three cats. Um, I got a couple extra for insurance purposes. <laughs> we had actually lost another one in 2019. And oh, so no. Wolfgang was kind of like, and, and, I, and I'm very careful when I say replacement cat, because you cannot replace a relationship. But when the time is right, most people want to get another animal. So Wolfgang was that, and then he's gone. So I got two more after that. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, at, at Super Zoo, yeah, my mom and I decided to go kind of on a whim, and they just had one beef left, and we just, you know, we just take risks, and it, that's what's so rewarding too is to that I don't have an experience bringing a product to market, starting a company. I've been a musician my entire life, so this has been a lot, a big challenge personally to just try to get this off the ground and keep it going mm-hmm. um which is thrilling to see that i've gone this far and you know we were we were really grateful at super zoo to win a best new product award but it really just shows that it's, the timing is right you know yeah that this com- these conversations can happen and that pet loss support is needed and recognized um i've heard some other people say uh that you know in when I was a kid, dogs were outside for protection mm-hmm. and cats were in barns to eat mice and used for purposes. And now, look, in just, okay, I'm 45. In just 40 years, we're throwing and planning birthday parties for our pets and like right. getting custom cakes made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What a shift, right? What yeah. a cool, cool shift that they really are acknowledged as family members. And I think that's also why saying goodbye is so, so hard. They're not just animals anymore. They're not just pets. And in my lifetime, we used to say that it's Mm -hmm. just a dog, right? It's just your cat. And so I had that belief in my head, which is why I think I was so hard on myself of like, man, it was just Wolfgang. Like he's an animal. Why is this so hard? And yet there's been this huge culture shift in the world on how we treat animals these days. And it's beautiful and it's awesome. Yeah. And it says a lot about people, I think, how they treat their animals. So. <laughs> but right, right. We became yeah. veterinarians, so I guess you could imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the, the, the Halloween costumes and all these really fun things that, that we get to do now. And I think you're right that millennials are treating their pets like they would children. And, you know, um, I think that's great. I think it's really fun. Yeah, I, I well, so just just so share your share your website. So it's oh sure, it's wolfieswish dot com, and that's w o l f i e s w i s h dot com. And our Instagram is also wolfies underscore wish. Wonderful. Perfect. That way, everybody can get a chance, go there, and start sending friends yeah. there when you see somebody's having a yeah. struggle. And, you know, I mean, I think it's it's just the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it, the more we let people know you've been heard, You've we've also been there, you're not wrong for feeling right. how you feel, we're all in this together, right. you know? And for us, it's nice to have a resource to be able to send people to that we know are going to struggle. Because um, what we do every day, unfortunately, we are part of that you know, the end of, of the life of a pet very often. Um, so it's, I, I'm thankful to have a, a resource to be able to, to share with people. So thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, I you're welcome. Agree. I've, I've learned how hard it is on, on both of you when you, when you have to help a family through this decision and 
and sometimes a sudden euthanasia, uh, you know, it weighs on you because I think they look to you for answers or for emotional support. And you have so much else on your plate that you can't really wear all those hats. And I realized that the veterinarians are, are, you know, you need help. You need some place to send people, whether it's Wolfie's Wish or another pet loss support program. Um, and, and I like educating people too, that that's not, you are not psychologists and you are not therapists and that's not your role or your job and to not expect that from you. I think, I think, you know, with the word doctor, there's a lot applied and people probably ask way more of you than you can give. So that's another part of, that I like to address in my blog is like, you know, be nice to your veterinarian. They're not, they're not putting your animal down because they want to, they're doing it because they need to. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's tricky. And I, and I thank you both for, for the path that you've chosen because it's very difficult in a lot of ways. That's just one. Well, that's very sweet of you to say that, but uh, it means a lot to us. And I'm definitely going to recommend Wolfie's Wish to my clients because honestly, I can't, I wish I'd known about this sooner, I'll be honest, because uh, it's something that I had more than enough clients that I can tell they're going to have a really hard time afterwards. Yeah. Um, just because of the, yeah. how, how emergent maybe it came up. Uh, they may not have the anticipatory right. side of things, but it's still very real for them. So uh, I will definitely be uh, speaking Wolfie's Wish's praises moving mm -hmm. forward. So. Yeah. And oh, I, I've you. even had those people come back. Um, even after we've come through the first, you know, we've, we've said goodbye and I've had people come back and want to like rehash the illness and rehash yeah. saying, oh, goodbye. Gosh. you know, and, and, and I, my heart breaks for them. Cause I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I, I'll explain it to you, but I don't think my logical explanation of why medically this was necessary or why this happened is going to answer wow. the that you feel no matter how much it puts a closure on the medicine the 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 whole right is still there right and so it's it's really great to have this resource to be able to use for people who really need that healing and just briefly you reminded me of this period i went through of obsessing over what had happened and how like i wanted to understand and i counted 16 things that had to go wrong for him to die the way that he did and even then, and repeating that, it's like I couldn't stop. I was stuck in a loop. But even then, it didn't help me. Right. You know, I thought I would, if I understand what happened, then I'll be okay. It's not true. It actually doesn't help. It only, it only like perpetuates it. And I, I at least caught myself right in that obsession and knew that, okay, I've got to, I need help. I need to get through this. Um, my brain can't rationalize and understand and that's that's okay it's okay but i know there's a way through this oh yeah well and you go yeah. through depending on the situation you blame yourself where you can which is not sure. healthy sure. or you blame you know the veterinarian or you blame you blame somebody because there's there's that anger and that like i need an explanation and that's very hard too because you know, that's another reason why we can't always be the counselor either, right? Because, I, you know, sometimes I'm in, intrinsically linked to the medicine, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's, that yeah. um, they don't have the freedom to feel the way they need to feel. Yeah. No, I definitely relate to that. I had some, some really strange, like anger was a big, a big symptom and I'm not an angry person and I don't really get angry. And yet it was, it was kind of like happening and I was almost witnessing it. So, um, again, I'm glad I got professional help of dealing with that. But then the guilt too, I think no matter how our pets pass, there's guilt involved, like you said. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I have ultimately realized, you know, and I, I've had some experience doing self-help work that guilt, guilt is, is not helping. It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't help anything. It actually makes us suffer more. And so Louise Ray has a great quote on some of her work that says, you know, am I willing to let go of being guilty? Can I just be willing to see that it doesn't serve me? And that was really helpful to just kind of entertain that idea of, okay, yeah, it's normal, but kind of got to let that go. Yep. Yeah. And the card, actually the card that goes with that says, you know, I did the best I could with what I had at the time, which is true for everyone. I really believe that. 
Yeah. And once we give ourselves that permission to go, oh, I did do a good job and I did make the best decisions that I could at that time. Right. Huh. Okay. Let me not be so hard on myself for today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to give yourself permission to do that. And a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> you do. And moving through grief is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. And um, it's not easy for anyone. Right. But patience and persistence and giving giving oneself the time that's needed to do it. It could be months. It could be years. Yeah. Different. Yeah. But it's worth it. It's worth working through. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And, you know, if any of our listeners ever have any questions, they can always email us at podcast at mybalto.com just so that we can also connect you too. So, you know, there's, there's multiple ways for people to connect. And um, I, I just can't tell you how thankful I am for you to come and share your story and what you're doing and uh, everything with us. I, I really, it really means so much to me. I'm, I'm so glad we've, we've been trying to get this together for like months. So I'm so yeah. happy to finally have it. <laughs> I know. And here, and, and it worked. We made it. I'm on my phone and, and I know. Saw just a few minutes ago, I was like, oh, 3% battery. Yeah, better, better plug that one in. <laughs> Well, thank you we again so much. And we, we will definitely, you. um, you know, be kind of sharing your, your stuff and, and, um, just, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough, um, for coming on and, and spending your time and giving yourself, you know, giving us well, your time. Well, thank you for bringing, for letting me talk about this subject and for giving it space. And, you know, uh, it's not, it's not yet common to really talk about pet loss grief. So thank you for being bold enough to give an episode towards towards this this important topic well, well we think it's it vitally important sorry go ahead yes. Robert. What you no, say? no you're good i i can't agree more it's, uh, i'm i'm thrilled to have you on today it's uh been a nice conversation across the board so thank you so much thank okay. you thank you both well this has been the pause it podcast thanks everyone for listening and um yeah thanks tune in next time <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later